Hello, hello, it's Sonny Melendrez, and welcome to the positive side of the radio spectrum. This is the all-new Sonny Melendrez Show. Now, you know, every week we strive to bring you inspiration and entertainment through storytelling, fascinating guests, exclusive celebrity interviews, and most of all, lots of enthusiasm. Now, let me begin by telling you a story. If you listened to my last show, you heard my visit to San Antonio Academy and all the preschoolers who donated toys for the less fortunate children served by the Sunny Melendres Community Center on the west side of San Antonio. And by the way, you'll find a picture of both sets of kids on sunnyradio.com slash show. Well, as I was getting ready to leave, I was standing next to their teacher, Miss Sinclair, and a five-year-old boy named Blake came up to me and said, Mr. Melendres, you're so kind. Oh, thank you. Aww. Bye. What did he say? What, he says, Mr. Melendres, you're so kind. Aww. Oh, Blake, what a, what a sweet... You guys, I'll tell you, this is a reflection oh, on all of you. Oh, that is so nice. Thank you very much, Blake. And thank you, Miss Sinclair and Miss Gutierrez, for instilling such strong values in the lives of these young boys. Your influence does not go unnoticed. And now, on with the show. Sunny Radio, sunnyradio.com Well, my guest is an educator's educator. Lee Tal is the most compassionate, most creative, most engaging most talented. I mean, I cannot use enough words to describe you, Lee. It's like you came from another planet to bless us all. That's too nice. You left out old. (laughs) No, not hardly. Not hardly. Um, I want to start by by giving everyone kind of an idea of this wonderful uh, footprint that you've put put into the, uh, the lives of so many kids. Uh, I first met you when you were doing a show called Cat Paws, one yes. that uh, many have uh, probably grown up uh, watching on PBS. That ran for how many years? 17 years. Wow. Yeah. Now, how did Cat Paws get started? Well, I had wanted to do a children's television program from the time I was three because I was a Sherry Lewis watcher. Really? Oh, yes. I had my puppets and, you know, practiced. Um, so I'd always wanted to do a program you know how do you how do you do that? So um, we just decided. I worked with four amazing teachers, and we decided that we were going to just do it. We were just going to create a program mm. and try to market it. So uh, we did the pilot over at Ken's TV, and um, they said, "Good, we like it. We need thirteen. And we were like, thirteen. <laughs> oh my gosh, it took forever to do one. Oh, okay. So uh, they suggested we go over to KLRN PBS. and have them, yes, have them do the production of the show. And we did. And about three shows into it, they said, we, we want the show. Wow. We want the show. We'll give you airtime. You give us the show. And so, you know, 17 years later, we were still That's amazing. working with them. And, and the other part of this equation is the fact that you were funding the whole thing yourself, right? Yes, Yes. It wasn't like um, you had a, a big sponsor or no, no, we didn't. angel investor or anything like that. No. Um, there, was, there was talk sometimes of having um, like network PBS come in, but then they wanted to change the show and put these people in and take these people out and use um, actors for children instead mm. of real children because mm-hmm. we always used just sure. kids. You want to be on the show, you're on the show. And so we were like, eh, that's okay. We'll just... Keep doing what we're doing. Good for you. Good so. for you. We had the, we had the same policy with uh, you and me, kid, on the Disney Channel. All those kids, we found them on playgrounds. Oh. We we saw parents having fun with their kids, and we would approach them and say, "Would you like to be on our on our show?" Yeah. And that's what we ended up having. And, mm-hmm. and there's a, like, as you know, a very magical uh, thing that happens when you watch that uh, as a uh, as a viewer. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the kids, the kids were just always themselves and, their, sure. you know, their faces, their, their smiles. Um, it, you know, you didn't have to be a great dancer because I'm certainly not a great dancer. Um, but you just, 
they just loved it. They just wanted to be on. And um, I still have grown ups come up to me and say, I was on your show when I was six years old. Aww. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And they'll say, do you remember me? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm sure you were fabulous. I, I know what so, you mean. Yeah. Now, you have, a, of course, so many talents. These songs. Tell me about these, these songs that you write because you, I mean, how many songs have you written, would you say? Oh my gosh. I don't know. Hundreds, but, right? At least, yeah. Wow. I've been I've been writing music um since I was like 3 years old. My grandmother would play the piano. I would stand there and sing and make up songs. Um I I've just been writing for forever. And I always wonder when when is the day going to come when it stops. No. But it no. it doesn't No. It hasn't stopped. It's a so, fountain. Yeah, it yes. just keeps There's always whatever situation I'm in, wherever I'm teaching, um, or at church, um, there's always an inspiration for a song. Do you have a favorite? So, oh, gosh. I think my favorite is um, When I Grow Up. And my daughter, Joy, sang it when she was maybe 10 years old. And then in the second verse, I sort of echoed her. Mm. So it would be like mm. her and then oh. what she would be like when oh. she grew up. And it's all about... Wanting to be the same when you grow up as you are when you're little, having the same heart and the, the same spirit, um, the same laughter for life and joy. Dreams, hope, love. Show I am joy, joy, joy. When I grow up, I hope I'll be the same as I am now. A dream inside, a song at night, and good friends all around. When I grow up, I hope I'll be. The same as I am now A heart that's true A mind that's new And both feet on the ground Sunset, sunrise This year just went flying by Everywhere I go People want to know Who Show I am joy, joy, joy When I grow up I hope I'll be The same as I am now A dream in sight A song at night And good friends all around When I grow up I hope I'll be the same as I am now A heart that's true A mind that's new And both feet on the ground Sunset, sunrise This year just went flying by Everywhere I go People want to know Who So oh, beautiful. Um, I think that's probably my, I, I still cry every time I hear her I sing. I bet, I bet. She's, she's just an incredible singer. So You know, the, the other thing is that you have her 10-year-old voice. Yes. You know, uh, oh, yes. forever. I, I have all my baby's voices. Because <laughs> I made them all start, you will sing this song. 
you will sing. You will be on this TV show. Well, let's talk about all your babies because you have a new show that's coming up. Yes. And, and it's based on your book called Up on the Rooftops. Uh-huh. And uh, your, I guess your, your published name is Mary Lee Campbell Towel. Yes. That's, where, where can people get this book? Um, on, on Amazon. On, um, you know, you just go to your books on your phone Great. and pull it up. Well, we'll have a so, link on it on, on sunnyradio.com. Yeah, right. So the, the show is, is about fostering and adopting? Yes. The show is called The Hard Start, and it's uh, real-life stories of children that had very rough, very terrible beginnings that have been taken into foster homes or adopted and um, what happens to them afterwards. And um, it's, it's a realistic program uh, so that people can understand that um, it's not like the commercials where you see children running through the flowers into their new family's arms. Mm-hmm. But it's a very uh, difficult process for the kids, um, fostering and then even adopting. Um, people think, oh, they're adopted, so now they should just be happy and grateful. And, and children aren't. They, they feel uh, a loss of their biological family. The hard start helps families to understand that it's going to be a rough go, but you can make it. And, you know, with, the, with uh, lots of prayer and um, faith, in, faith in the Lord— um, and we talk about getting a community of people behind you. Mm-hmm. We we could not have raised our boys on our own. Walk us in. through that process because you were you were foster parents before, right? Yes, we were. Um, I was teaching downtown um, at an elementary school, and um, I was the music teacher there, so I saw every kid in the school, and I would notice classmates not there, and I'd say, "Where's so and so? Oh, CPS, miss." Mm. CPS. Okay. Mm. So I and I didn't even know what CPS meant. Yes. So um because you just you just live in your own world and um so I found out what that was through the social worker there and um I went home and I told my husband Brian I said these kids are you know every every week we lose two kids mm. to the foster care system and I said they could come to our house. You know, we have a big house. We have <laughs> we have lots of love. And I said, and, and Brian said, and Brian said, yeah, great. He was he was ready. Wow. So we we did our training, and back then, this is you know maybe twelve years ago. It, it took a little longer than it does now, mm-hmm. but we we went through our training and our house study, and um, you know a million people, and I I mean a million, come to your house and you know look for chinks in the wall and. Uh, mm. They go into your refrigerator. The temperature's not right. I mean, it it, wow. it is unbelievable. Water around your house. We had a little fish pond in the front. They said, "Get rid of it." Really? Yeah. I mean, it's they are they just come in with a fine tooth comb. Now, in some parts of the country, it's called something else, but uh, here in San Antonio and in Texas, it's Child Protective Services. Yes, is what CPS is. Right. So they come with a fine tooth comb, and then finally. And you, then you get licensed, and then you wait. And for some people, that is, you know, now um, I mentor a lot of foster families, and they get licensed, and they're ready to go, and then they wait. And they're like, why am I waiting? I heard that there was all these children. Mm-hmm. And the, the issue is it's, it's so complicated because one child is with one agency and one child is with another agency. And so they have to go through all these, you know, just red tape. But eventually – you you get your children. And so we started with um, two little boys, and, um, you know, they both have to be – they're both teenagers now, I'm sure. But they, they came for just two weeks, and they told us, they're going to be with you for two weeks. Great. When the two weeks was over, it was like, oh, my gosh, they're taking my, my mm, kids. It yes. Was so yes, hard. Yes. These are things that foster parents need to know um, – and that you do need a break sometimes. But the last thing and the thing that the show, The Hard Start, tries to emphasize is that no matter what happens, you can get through it. Because it's not happening to you, it's happening to them. Mm. So when they're acting out, and this was something Brian and I had to learn. You know, we'd be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening to us again. Well, no, we finally learned, no, this is happening to them again. They're reliving this trauma again. Mm. And with that in mind, 
it was so much easier for us to work with the boys and, you know, um, help them through their situations and understand this is not about us. This is all about them. Now, throughout this process, did these boys, your boys, tell you, uh, you know, more of what would make you, help you to understand their past, share with you experiences that... uh, that were hurt, hurtful? Yes. The car the car was always the place where they talked. I mean, the car was always a scary place to be with the boys because you never knew what was going to happen. Like, there'd be water bottles flying at your head and books and people kicking your seat. And um, sometimes, you know, they, they'd just get so angry and they'd unbuckle and, you know, try to hurt me while I'm driving. Mm. And, you know, the first couple times that happened, I was like, oh, my. Gosh, uh, what is this? But then, you know, you deal with it, and you and you realize, I can deal with this. I can do this. I can help them. So we would be driving, and um, they would just throw out something. You know, this happened or that happened. Um, my dad did this to me. My mom said this. Um, you know, they just. And I don't want to say specifics sure. on the air, but sure. just horrific things. And um, I would just say, okay, do you want to talk about it? No. Okay. And so then you go, you know, to your therapist because they all go to see a therapist. And um, there were sexual abuse outcries from the kids and that hadn't hadn't been um, looked at before. And, um, and so little by little – all kinds of horrible things came out, torture, um, abuse of, of every kind, and, you know, just, I mean, just crazy things that you would think, who would do this to a child? Mm. I mean, it, it, it can't be that anybody would do this to a child. Then the kids, you know, they have to go testify, and, um, you know, they're, it, they're, um, what, they're, what they've witnessed, what, ex- what they experienced goes down on record, And then the state decides what's going to happen from there. So um, we were able to, while the boys were in our foster care, we weren't allowed to do anything. Because I would be like, have you arrested this person? Well, that's none of your business. Mm. Well, it kind of is my business because I've got three boys that are trying to get through life. Right. And they're terrified he's going to show up at the house. Um. But after we adopted them, I went to the DA in Hondo and I said, I am here to make a complaint because you guys haven't done a thing. And I went almost three times a week really, for a year and a half. And finally, we got, um, you know, their their abuser arrested and um, got justice. Good so, for you. Yeah. And how are the boys doing now? Um, two of them are doing great. Two of them are doing very well. Um, I've got two in high school, great grades. One plays sports, one's working. And, um, and then um, our oldest of the, of the three is 18, and he's, he's really in, in a bad place. He's really mm. in a bad place. He's mm. gone back home to Hondo. He's always considered that his home. And, um, I mean, he's still part of our family, and we still talk to him, but he's um, – He's really made some bad choices. And, um, you know, it's, it's all about choices. Sure. The hurt, the sure. hurt and the, the trauma he experienced um, was the hurt and the trauma that all the boys experienced. And he just never opened his heart to letting somebody help him. You mentioned the fact that... Uh it's important to have a support group or a church. Yes. Is there also an organization that someone can go to, maybe a website to get more information? Oh, yeah. Um, I work with a group called Chosen, mm-hmm. and they um, mentor and work with foster families and adopted families um, that are in, you know, in situations of crisis where they're just like, I can't, I can't do this. And I need this child to go to a different home. Mm. And so um, they, they have training classes for the foster parents that help them to better understand what the kids are going through and how to, to deal with it yourself. Um, I, I work with, um, I mentor two families um, that have difficult 
um, adoptions. And one, the family is from China. Uh, the, the children are from China. And then the other, um, the little boys, are from someplace in this area, three tiny little boys mm. that um, that these people are um, adopting very soon. And and so you just you just work with them and tell them, you know, if if I can get through it, because I'm a big baby, if I can get through it, <laughs> you can get through it. Yeah. And you just you have to take it day day by day. But you know, with with all the with all the things you go through with them, with the with your kids, um, there's just such a a sense of joy. You know, you um, I don't I don't look back and think, oh my gosh, that was the hardest thing I've ever done. I look back and I think, gosh, remember when we went to Arkansas and we fished, but there was no water in the creek, and so we couldn't. Gosh, remember <laughs> when uh, we went to um, we went to Disney World? Do you remember when we went to um, to Big Bend? Remember when we did this? Remember? And isn't it funny when? Um, remember when you were little and you used to say funny words because you couldn't, mm-hmm. you know, because you couldn't say the real word. And so, you know, it's, it's, we look back and it's, it's just, it was hard, It, but it's, there's so much joy. Sure. So much joy. Sure. And, um, and, we, and we gave up a lot. I mean, you give up a lot. You, you know, you give up going out to have dinner by yourself and uh, you give up um, going to parties and you give up. A lot of your friends are like, eh, they're busy doing that. And that's mm. okay. I mean, um, I don't know, because you just gradually grow. You grow. And you've got to give yourself that time to grow. So, like I said, I'm I'm ready. Our boys are teenagers. I'm ready to go again. But <laughs> come oh. on. Bring them on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Lee, you are such a treasure. No. Now, your, your, your show, it's called Hard... The hard start. The hard start. Yes. And, and where can we see it? It should it should be out in January on Uplift TV. Okay. Uplift TV. We'll have the link on sunnyradio.com. Okay. Anything else you'd like to share with us? Um, just, I just am so happy that you are back on the air. Um, I've been telling you through Facebook um, and your incredible words of love and wisdom on Facebook that you know, we've we've got to have a positive voice. And that's what Cat Paws was always about. Yes. Look at these amazing kids. Yes. Look at look at all the wonderful things that are happening in the world. And and that's that's just how I feel about the world, that that there's so much good and there's so many good people and there's there's some hard things. But we've got to we need a voice. Um and you're the voice and I'm just so happy wow. that, that you're that you're back out there because we we need a voice of um, life is good and and the world is a good place and let's let's be part of it let's be part of the happiness and you know let's just take joy I mean my my husband always says the tiniest things make you happy and and they do yes. I mean the tiniest yes. things the little things mean a lot make me happy yes, um, yes. and and that's I think that's the secret to um, just loving this world and being able to love each other. I agree. So, um, I agree. so I'm I'm thrilled that well, you're thank back. You. I thank really you. am. We're we're speaking the same language. Yeah, Lee Tao. God bless you. We'll be watching your show. Yes. And um, uh, can I tell you about my website? Oh, please, okay. please. I have a website. It has not a cool name at all. Um, it's it's just leetowel dot com. But it's all about. It's not a cool name at all. It's not a cool name. It's, it's your name. Of it's just my it's name. A cool name. Well, I know, but we figured if, it, if oh, we, no. I wanted to call it Finley's Feathers, because, really, because because my granddaughter's named Finley. Ah, okay. And I have a book, a children's book called Finley's Feathers. Ah. And it's about children that um, need hope and courage, and children without daddies. She's she's a sweet baby without a daddy, and um, so I wanted to call it that. But then it was like, okay, people will click on Finley's feathers, and it's it's not jewelry or or birds. Yeah. <laughs> so because everybody thought Cat Paws was a pet store show, so um, so we just went with LeeTowel dot com, and it's all about adoption and fostering Great. and the community, and it and it tells you these are three things you can do this second to make a difference. Well, I think so. Lee Towel is the coolest name okay. for that website. <laughs> 
Well, I like Finley's feathers better, but, <laughs> but we'll switch it one day. So, Lee, thank you so much. Oh, God thank bless you, you, Sonny. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there you have it. Thanks to Lee Towell for her encouraging words and to her daughter Joy for the beautiful song, When I Grow Up. Now, you'll find links to Lee's site and virtually everything we talked about, including your ability to listen to the show and all our shows on demand at sunnyradio.com slash show. That's sunnyradio.com slash show. You'll also find the Sunny Melendra Show on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, iTunes, YouTube, and who knows where else. Until next time, I'm Sunny Melendrez. Remember what Lee Towell said, life is good the world is a good place. Let's be part of it. Bye-bye.